What's going on everybody? Welcome to today's video. This is going to be a very different video than I've done before. Um, you can also probably tell that it's a very long video. This is a film analysis of one of my games. So Manny Eckerd from Seattle Sockeye uh, was kind enough to do a film analysis for me. So we broke down this game. This is San Antonio Alamode, which is the club team I played for this past season uh, against Dallas Brawl at Texas sectionals this past September. It was a great game. Uh, definitely really cool to watch. And Manny basically just analyzed any moment that I was on the field. Now I'm a defensive cutter. So if you were also a defensive cutter, I think there's a ton of good stuff that you can learn from this. Manny drops a ton of knowledge bombs, but also if you're just uh, any ultimate player, right? I think there's a lot of things that you can learn from this. Uh, he talks a lot about defensive positioning, some things to do on offense, uh, a lot of different things. So if you're interested, I think you might be able to get some good value out of this. And if you're interested in getting your own film analyzed, Manny offers film analysis. I'll leave all of his information down in the description if you want to reach out to him to get some one-on-one -on -one help. And also just a couple things I want to preface. Um, I understand that the film quality is not the best. This is us on a Google Meet watching a YouTube video. And because we're recording the meeting, uh, the film quality and the the lag in it is, is very, very bad. So it's not the easiest watch. I apologize for that. But hopefully, if, if you're interested, you might be able to pull some good knowledge out of that. Man, he's kind of talking over um, a lot of this stuff. So, I mean, the audio is good throughout the entire thing. It's just the visual is, is not the best. So let's get into the video. To start, basically, I have some D themes and I have some O themes. And I want to go over, can you see the Word doc that I'm presenting right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to go over these D themes and the O themes. And then I have a ton of basically anytime you did anything on the field, like I have a note on it and the yellow notes are the ones that I view as more important to go over. So I want to go over the themes and then we'll go over all the yellow notes. And then if we have any time, then we can pick random other stuff to talk about. Cool. Sounds good. Um, but we're going to start with these significant themes. Um, so I noticed two main things on defense that I think you could improve upon. Um, as for what you're doing well, I think it's clear that your athleticism is not an issue. And like you're generally faster and quicker and can accelerate and decelerate better than anyone you're guarding. So I feel like if you just make a couple... Um, like a couple major adjustments to your positioning, but a couple adjustments that are pretty easy to make, uh, then that can really upgrade your defense to another level. So I'm gonna go over, um, we're gonna talk about a, a D gap or a buffer. Are you familiar with that concept, playing defense? A little bit, yeah. Okay, so Brawl ran the same pull play about like seven or eight times here and Almost every time uh, you came down on the weak side cutter um, and then they would clear three cutters deep and then that one cutter would slash across the field. And it worked a lot for them. Uh, so I want to go over some of these clips and see how you could have prevented that. Um, so first clip right here. Uh, so you're coming down, you pulled it, so you are going to be guarding this guy, and it looks like every time Alamo pulls, they just come down in waves. So they've got three handler defenders and four cutter defenders rather than matchups. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so every time, pretty much every time you come down on defense, you are guarding this rail cutter um, on the right side of the field. And so let's see what Brawl does here. So you'll notice one, two, three, just drift deep, and then they slash that rail cutter across the field, and then he catches an under. Now, in this particular scenario, I'm not sure if there's anything you could have done to prevent this, specifically because you're the puller, and this player attacks from a really shallow position. So if you pull, then you know you're at a disadvantage. You're coming down slower than the other players. So I think to give this up early in this game is not a big deal. It's like you're not happy about them gaining yards on a pull play, but 
it's like overall fine in the grand scheme of things. Um, but that should be like a mental note for you. Like, okay, they ran this pull play. Um, because teams will often, I would say like most, most club teams really rely on a couple pull plays. And if one of them is working, then they're just going to keep running that over and over again. So let's go to the next timestamp here. All right. So we've got another poll here. And then you're guarding the, the same, not the same person, but the same cutter in that position. And then they run the same play, right? Three going deep. And this one comes across. And it looks like you do anticipate it a bit here, but you make contact with him pretty early into the cut, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's like you're getting your body in the way, but it, it looks like you just get knocked off balance and then you turn your hips the wrong way. And then he just beats you into the space still. Um, so this is where the concept of, of a D gap would be very useful, right? Um, what do you know, Al, your force here? Like, is this just a straight up mark? Yeah, this it should be flat here. Yeah. So this mark without sags here from the handler defenders is very vulnerable to this type of play because you would like as a defender like you want to know if you should defend this space or this space and you don't really know that because it's it's a flat mark so um what i would like to see here is like a slight d gap maybe about right here so that way you still have a head start if he attacks this space uh and then you can still catch up if he attacks this space um but ideally and and what alamo does later in the game is they'll start sagging these defenders into the lane to try to prevent that pull play from happening um but yeah so you make contact early you get turned around and then he still gains yards on the pull play uh so let's go to the next clip so they immediately swing it and what are they going to do just slash that guy across the field and this play looks maybe a little bit different because these clear cuts these three players are not just running straight deep but this is this is basically the same play that they've been running so if i'm you at this point you probably want to like again it's a little bit hard for you to to get there because you're pulling but you, if you're going to guard this player the one they keep utilizing on their pull plays like you need to just book it down mm -hmm. and you need to get to this space in front of uh, your offender, right? Because you know that he's going to slash across the field and he's looking to attack the space in front of the disc, right? And a lot of teams will run pull plays similar to this, even if it's not the exact same one. Um, so let's see the next clip. Let's back up a little bit. Okay, so they come down and again, you're guarding the same player. And then they do something a little bit different here. So only two guys go deep, and this one comes under. But again, it's going to be the same cut, just slashing across the field. And this time they get a huge under. Right? This is like 15 yards probably. And they're set up really well for continuation passes here. So again, that's going to be the same uh, type of adjustment that you need to make. And this time, it's not an issue of if you can get down fast enough. It's just an issue of knowing what space you want to prioritize as a defender, right? So I would, one, open up your hips here a little bit. Um, so right now your, your hips are facing towards your defender, and that leaves you unaware, or facing towards your offender, that leaves you unaware of what's happening behind you. Uh, important things are happening back here, right? These, these offenders are moving. They're clearing to set this player up for that big slash across the field. So if you face your hips towards a thrower um, and add in that D gap, I'd say that's gonna set you up much better to play success on, on these pull plays because you'll be able to see your surroundings a little more, right? You can see out of the corner of your left eye if you're doing that versus you can't see anything that's behind you right now. Right. Um, and you can also see the thrower and see where they're looking as opposed to Right now, you're just honed in on your guy. Don't know where the thrower is trying to throw it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, 
how in in that case how far away would you set up from or would you create that that d gap good question so it depends a little bit on the force right and it is alamo pretty much always comes down flat in this situation right mm -hmm. so that that does th definitely make things more difficult for you as a downfield defender but looking at where the sags are right here um if 19 attacks in this area it's it's looking like it's not really going to be viable um because this sag is directly in front of the disc i think this sag looks like they're a little bit farther to the left and so a throw could be squeezed into this area which is what ends up happening or what ends up happening is this this player kind of just stops sagging because i guess they think the pull play is over um so going back to this initial positioning I would say if this is the space that you want to prioritize defending, then you should maybe be like, a, maybe a, around here. Um, or if your team has kind of like switches baked, baked into their defensive philosophy, you could be like over here and then you could tell this player, your teammate, okay, you take this, this cut across if it happens and then execute that switch. But if we're thinking about this just on an individual basis, then I would say in order to defend this pass, you probably want to be more like in this area, like or or maybe even in front of uh, of your teammate right here. Because another advantage to to these sags is that a huck is going to be really hard mm -hmm. um, because they're going to see that wind up, they're going to jump and get their hands in the way and if this center handler wants to throw a huck, it's going to need to be a, a really wide bendy throw to get it around either of the sags. And that's a difficult throw to execute. So you could use that to your advantage and be like, okay, I'm going to focus on protecting this under space by setting up over here where my, where my mouse is. And mm -hmm. you don't really have to worry about the huck that much. Got it. Um, okay, next clip, 25 minutes. Right around here. So you're coming down, and then immediately they just run that guy across. And so, yeah, like as you're running down, like I, you probably want to run down to to this space over here instead of running down on that vertical line to that player especially when the disc is all the way over here, there's no reason for Like you don't need to guard any of this kind of oval that I'm making with my mouse here. Right. Right. Um, Cause that, that's just not a dangerous area of the field. It's really far away. Uh, it would be a, basically an impossible throw to execute from this spot. Um, so this is the space closer to the disc that the offense is going to be looking to attack. Got so it. it's not cross and then get that pass. And this is not like a super punishing position. Again, like this is not a huge under, but if you can deny that, then your, your team will be in a slightly better position. Um, so right here, where is it? Oh, I think, uh, okay. So this is not, not a pull play, but it's a similar concept here um, where you're, your offender is pretty far away from the disc horizontally. Like if this guy wants to throw a huck here, it needs to land right here and it needs to be on the money. This, this would be a very difficult huck to execute. So I would say you probably want to be instead of super tight, how you are right now, um, almost making contact with him. You can prioritize all this space, defending this space here by uh just taking a couple more steps closer laterally to the disc uh let's see what what happens in this scenario yeah so i think you're it looks to me like this player does get open here because mm -hmm. he's able to close that gap between him and you pretty early on and if an offense closes that gap early on then uh, they're able to run past you a lot of the time because 
they are running forwards and you are going to be either side running or, or back pedaling. Uh, so I, I, it does look like that. If that offender just cuts straight under, they might be open here. Um, ultimately, though, it looks like you were able to defend the cut probably because you move well and you're athletic. Gotcha. Yeah, but the like to work smarter, not harder, would just be to to be into that in that space a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, the the next thing we're going to talk about after this is maintaining vision of the disc hmm. um, while you're while you're guarding an off stage cutter. Um, and this would be a really good example for that too. Like, look how you're just honed in on your guy, hmm. um, and when he is not. I'm going to define those terms real quick, off stage and on stage. So on stage just means like actively cutting in the lane in front of the disc, uh, looking to receive a pass. And off stage is like kind of like this, this guy is off stage. Honestly, there aren't really any on stage cutters right now. And this guy is like getting ready. He's, he's kind of in the preparatory phase to go from off stage to on stage. Right, so in that phase where he's jogging, setting up his cut, that's that would be a good opportunity to one maintain that buffer like we talked about, and two flip your hips so that you have a you have a view of the disc and these players in front of you. Got it. That would be a way to take in more information in the field. But we'll we'll talk more about maintaining a view of the disc in the next uh, category here. All right. So you're coming down, guarding the same guy. And they do run a slightly different play here. But ultimately, the the guy does come slashing across the field. I, I don't think this is part of the pull play. I think he probably just saw an opportunity. He was like, my defender is really tight here. So I might be able to win the open side. And you're tight enough just to discourage this throw. But I, I do think this is like a... This is probably a throwable pass to about right here. Uh, the thrower chooses to look it off, though. Um, and last clip on the concept of a buffer is going to be... And, okay, so you're right here. And I think this initial positioning is, is totally fine. Um, except... As this swing goes up, that's when you need to make an adjustment, all right? And this ties into the next point of, of maintaining a view of the disc because right here, you're just locked in on this guy and your your hips are oriented towards this sideline, which gives you a very limited view of the field, right? Like you can, out of your peripheral vision, you can maybe see what's going on like right here. Uh, but this is where the majority of the players are. And that's where the disc is. And that's the area that you really need to be aware of. You need to be aware of what's happening here so you can adjust your positioning as needed. And so what happens is that guy closes the gap really quickly. Um, and then after that, it, it looks like you do a good job after you close that gap. Um, and then the next cutter just takes the space. Uh, but hypothetically, I think a, a better, better positioning could be like flipping your hips towards the thrower, being able to see that disc and then stepping out to more like right here. Um, so that way you can either, I'm not sure what this mark is going to be. I'm honestly still not sure if this is a forehand or a backhand mark. I think we're still flat here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, in that case, you definitely would want a smaller D gap, mm -hmm. right? Like, because you, if the, if it's flat, then you also need to be able to contest this lane as well as this lane, which is tricky for you, mm -hmm. but still just like a, maybe like one or two steps in this direction, I think would help you react. Just giving you that little head start into that space that the, offense wants to attack got it okay yeah that makes sense yeah and and one more thing I'll, I'll say about that is like um with a flat mark uh even if there aren't sags hucks are going to be difficult 
So I understand that it's like you want to prioritize the under and lock in on your guy if if you do think the hucks are going to be hard to throw. So you could start with your hips facing towards the thrower as your guy is off stage. And then when your player enters that on stage space where he's actively cutting, then it seems like it would be more reasonable to flip your hips and play like aggressively underneath your guy. Mm -hmm. If you think the mark is going to take away the huck and that will help you take away these two, uh, these two lanes underneath. Got it. So it's like starting, starting like 45 kind of towards, so towards the thrower. And then as he becomes active, then kind of uh, like 45 under him almost. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, or even like, I would probably be facing my hips completely toward completely in this direction here. Just okay. to start. Um, as long as my guy is, is not a threat, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to be doing uh, because that gives me the most view of the fields, right? If you're facing in this direction, like at my mouse here, then mm -hmm. you can see everything that's happening on the fields. Um, and as long as your guy is not cutting, that's going to be advantageous for you. But then once he starts cutting, that's when you need to lock in. And actually, in this clip, it looks like you do a pretty good job of that. I see. So when you say lock in, is it um, like turn square back to the to the guy, or still trying to yeah. get info? Okay. Yeah, square. It, like when your when your guy is actively cutting, like making these vertical cuts, mm -hmm. um, it is more important to keep your hips facing towards your player. I would say, and if you are able to take peaks at the disc that's really good um but when your person is on stage definitely prioritize being able to move laterally in the the deep and under space got it by okay. facing yeah makes sense um so that is those are all the clips i have for the the d theme of buffer slash reading pull plays um, so sum that up, I would say when your guy is, is like multiple lanes over from the disc. Um, so if this is one lane and this is one lane, it looks like he's crossing over from like that sideline lane to the next lane over when he's starting in that lane, that's right next to the sideline, definitely give yourself like more more of a head start into the slashing space um, when he's looking to like slash across and get an under. And as far as reading pull plays goes, um, I think it's just something that you have to think about a little more. Like like take a mental note um, if you run down and a player is is making a cut like that, like slashing across the field, especially. For a team like Alamode, who is going to send their players down in like the same positions every time, it seems like <laughs> um, that could be an advantage uh, if all those players in their positions are all like making a mental note of what their offender does. Uh, right. Like they could become right. specialists throughout the game. Like you could become a specialist at guarding this this rail over here. <laughs> but what happens this game is brawl runs this play a lot and it continues to work um not this play but the one where they send three deep and slash one across and so they they just might as well keep running that if it's going to work um, okay let's go to the next theme here which is maintaining a view of the disc i think going through most of these clips is going to be pretty quick but i think it's important to just to, to see what you're doing on the field um so right here you defend an under well it doesn't really look like he's cutting he's pretty much just clearing the space um and it takes you a while to to look back at the disc here so he's clearing it's like 421 to 424 that's like three seconds or four seconds um where anything could be happening with the disc and like if the disc were to swing right here i don't know if they threw an immediate swing to here and this guy cleared up line then your player would be wide open for the 
underneath pass. Um, whereas if you had a view of the disk, then you would be able to see that quicker and react quicker. Gotcha. So in a lot of these clips, I think it's going to be when your player is like either starting off stage and staying off stage, try to maintain a view of the disk, or when they are going from on stage, like that guy was, to clearing, that is a great time to open up your hips. By open up, I mean like face, uh, face the thrower in this in this general direction, um, and try to take in as much information about the field as possible. So for that uh, for that scenario, would you mm -hmm. just um, I guess like as I'm running with the guy, yeah, like would you just be peeking here over your right shoulder? Yeah, that's an option, uh, and I actually have you in another clip at some point here, you do that really well, like a couple times. Uh, and another option would be to like flip your hips sooner and face this way, but kind of bail run with him. I see. Um, or shuffle. Yes. Like he's not moving that fast, so you might be able to get away with shuffling there. Yeah, like either of the, whichever of those is comfortable for you and helps you take in more information on the field. Got it. Okay, yeah. So we've got another clip coming up here. And right here, the disc is all the way on the far side of the field. And you're just locked in on this rail here. Um, and again, like you're really tight. You don't really have a, a D gap. And if you were to slash across, I think there's a, a good chance you would be open, although they opted to, to swing it instead. And Oh yeah, this is this is an important clip because uh, because you're staring at your guy when they do swing it, you're not able to adjust your position quickly enough, and then this pass ends up being a little bit behind him, like or not behind him, but he has to stop to receive it, right? So if it if you were able to be tighter on that pass, then you could have potentially gotten a block here or prevented it, right? And that initial positioning, that ability to be tight, comes from uh, one, like seeing this swing go up, and two, if you start with a buffer, then you don't feel like you need to recover um, because you're already winning the space, hmm. and then you're able to get tighter to the break side pass sooner. I see. Does that part make sense? Yeah. No, that does. Yeah, so because like, or, if you start tight here and he and he starts to slash, which happens, then you feel like you need to react and make up for it, and then the counter move is stronger. Whereas if you start in front of him, that's probably just going to discourage him from even making that cut in the first place, um, and then you'll be in a better position. To catch up sooner when the disc swings to the break side. Yeah, so it's almost like, like if I started with a buffer or like the D gap, it's like I know because of my positioning, he's only the only option he really has is that like kind of tighter break side slash. So I'm like anticipating that. Versus if I start tight, then it's I'm like reacting to two possible things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah. Like yeah. if you start kind of out here. Honestly, he doesn't really have any options as an offender. He would probably just wait and see what happens with the disc. Um, I see. Instead of making a move. Or, I don't know, if he does make a move, it's kind of like a waste of energy for him because you're already defending this space that he might want to attack. Yeah. So almost setting up where my teammate is then. Maybe not as far, but kind of in that general area. Yeah. Yeah, maybe like right right around here okay um and you know you don't really want to have two defenders right next to each other all the time but i think your teammate is clearing like he's following this guy so you're not just going to be hanging out next to him yeah uh okay next clip here all right so you're marking and then Uh, okay, so 
basically you're marking and then your guy throws and then it's clearing up fields and then it looks like for for a second like you're, you are looking at the disc and then you just turn your hips to face him um so in this scenario like your guy is there there is a player in between the disc and your guy so your guy is probably not going to be the first one to cut um i just open up your hips here uh, so face your hips this way. Maybe you give yourself like one more step of a buffer potentially. Hmm. Um, and just be able to see when the disc is thrown. Got Cause it. like if this is thrown, if this pass is completed, your guy could, could bust up line and he would probably be open up line. Right? Like if, if you and your guy raced to right here, if this is a completed pass, then he probably wins that. Yeah. Even though you are very fast. Okay, next clip. This one was in italics, which means it is the opposite. So this is a time when you did a really good job, I think, of checking in with the disc. So let's see what happens here. Where are you? You're right here. So it looks like your guy is about to make a cut. Nice. He makes the cut. You defend it really well. And then look at your head. I You checked. I saw you swivel your head like twice there as your guy was clearing. And then you you saw the swing go up, um, and maybe at this point you could get into like more of an open position mm -hmm. and like adjust your positioning so you're more over here. But like overall, that's a that's a good clip for your defense. Gotcha. And how uh, how important do you think is like sideline talk in that? Because um, like I think later in the season we kind of adjusted um to have more like sideline talk like communicating to the downfield defenders like that the disc is on the far side the disc is actively swinging the disc is centered yeah um, i think that's super helpful i i think sideline talk is great um but ultimately it, it does take like a little bit of time for you to process something that you hear and then react to it and make an adjustment uh, especially when there are a million things being yelled at everyone in an ultimate game. So mm -hmm. sideline talk is is definitely helpful, uh, and that's something elite teams do really well. Um, like the players on the sideline have more visual information than the players on the field, and they can relay that to the players on the field. But ultimately, like the players on the field should be maintaining vision of everything as much as they can because they'll still be able to react faster and put themselves in a better position if they see it rather than someone telling them what the sideline sees. Right. It makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. 26. What's going on here? Oh yeah, I think we, we saw this clip earlier in the buffer category. So yeah, we talked about it like if you're just playing with your hips more open, like around this area, one, you get a head start into the space in front of the disc. Um, and two, you can you can see what the thrower is looking at and if the thrower decides to swing it or hit another pass. Right. Um I don't remember if we covered this one already. Yeah, I think we talked about this in the in the other section. Yeah. And then oh, here's another this is a, a positive example. So where are you here? Oh yeah, so look at you right here. Like your your hips are are facing this way. Um, I don't know where your guy is. Oh, he's right here. So this is this is like great positioning, right? You know your guy is not a threat at all right now. There's there's nowhere no way he's gonna get the disc. So you're like, okay, I'm just gonna see what is happening with the rest of the fields. Maybe provide some deep help for my teammates potentially. And if this there's a throw is about to go up to this player, and if it were a floaty throw then I think there's a chance you could have gotten a D because mm -hmm. you're able to see what's happening in front of you. 
uh, it is not a floaty throw. But if it were, then you could have potentially made a play because you have vision of the field here. Right. I, I would say that is like pretty ideal positioning. And you've got your D gap. Um, next clip. Let's see what's going on here. So, again, it's just kind of the same thing. Your guy is, is clearing down the sideline here. Uh, you do glance a few times, so that's good. Like, I wouldn't say this is a this is not, like, a terrible clip for you, but I think just a little bit better would be opening, like, basically just playing on the other side of mm -hmm. your guy. So if your hips are here, uh, then it is easier for you to see more of the fields. Um because when you glance like this, like it, it's a, it's good, but it also gives your def your offender an opportunity to cut while you're not looking, um, which does happen sometimes, right? Yeah. Uh, thirty-one twenty-one. Oh yeah, I think we we already talked about this one. So, same thing, just like the guy is far away from the disc. Try to see more of the field. Mm -hmm. And then, last clip here. This one is going to be a positive one. Uh, okay, right here. So, this hut goes up. And I think you play really good defense here. Uh, I am a little bit confused about the force, but it looks like you end up. Your, your team ends up going backhand, but like, look how you, you see the hook go up and then you check back in with your guy. You cover him while he's actively moving, right? That's really good. And then you glance back over your shoulder to see if it goes up. And then you continue to, to check in with the disc constantly throughout this point. And I am confused about this force here so like it looks like you ended up going backhand um so if it's a backhand force then you just ended up on the wrong side of your person right um but alamo does does things like that with the force right and it's not always easy to tell what you should be doing as downfield defender mm -hmm. um so that is like th those are the two main themes i have for you as a defender uh buffer like giving yourself a head start into the spaces the offense wants to attack and maintaining a view of the disc which will help you identify those spaces um that you need a buffer for got it Do you have any questions about that um, uh, I guess also like when you have that D gap and then you're like completely flipped open to them looking at the disc. Mm -hmm. Um, if the person's not moving fast enough, like do you ever just find yourself like backpedaling with them? Like if let's say if the stack is if they're a vert stack or side stack and they're just kind of pushing. Yeah, sure. Um I mean you generally want to avoid backpedaling as a defender, obviously, but like if if my player, if my offender is just kind of jogging. Mm -hmm um then yeah i mean i mean backpedaling is is kind of just a fine way to move if it gives you an advantage of keeping a good view of the field i see so kind of yeah just like whatever you got to do to kind of maintain that proper positioning and yeah and i have a great clip here from the machine bravo semifinal from this year that highlights both of these concepts really well i'm a huge fan of the drone footage um so let's look at this first throw and then look at where these defenders are on the field All right i think this is shogren maybe uh and, and look at where their their hips and heads are turned like these defenders their hips are honestly not even turned towards their offender right they're looking at the disc they know what's going on, and the one guy who's defending a guy who's a, who's about to cut on stage, Nate Goff, has his hips turned towards his player, 
and then he's able to defend that cut and look what happens after he defends the cut he opens back up or he you can he doesn't open his hips yet but you can see that he's looking at the disc um he's not over pursuing to the break side he's maintaining that buffer and so basically as we're looking at this clip like at any time we can pause it and the, the on stage defenders will be pretty tight like we mm -hmm. see here and the off stage defenders will one have a buffer and two they'll be looking at the disc So like we'll pause again, the, the the defenders that are are cutting the players close to the on stage base, or defenders covering those players are are pretty tight, and these defenders have buffers. They're seeing what's happening, and here's a a cool clip here. Um, I, I'm pretty sure this is Andrew Shogren, and he starts with like with a huge deep buffer um and like we talked about he's maintaining a view of the fields and you think this might be a disadvantage because of this vertical gap between him and his offender but because he's able to see everything that's happening he is able to just close that gap as soon as his offender tries to punish him and then the, the throw is not viable right yeah that's pretty cool yeah and then basically the 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 one time that a defender here messes up his buffer right he he lets this guy get too close and then alex atkins just runs by and then because alex atkins is open the nake off has to cover and then nate leaves his guy open for the blade but yeah it's just an example, I think, of how most of the best teams in the country are are playing D um, on host stack, uh, like host stack especially, just uh, controlling the space in between them and their offenders, and and seeing everything that's happening on the field. Yeah. Um, any other questions before we move on to talking about offense? No, no, that was good. Cool uh okay so let's talk about the o themes i saw i saw a lot of good stuff from you on offense you didn't touch the disc a ton but that is very normal for a d-line cutter like d-line cutters just get the fewest touches of probably any any players on on the team um i think you look comfortable with the disc when you have it in your hands uh often it's like very obvious when a player is not comfortable with the disc they're maybe moving their feet around or like moving the disc in a really unnatural way. And I didn't see that at all from you. Um, I think your throwing progressions were good. What I mean by that is like you look downfield for a couple seconds and then you look to get it off the sideline. Uh, so we can play a couple of clips. Like, actually, let's add one clip for your. Uh, which I was just like, when I saw this, I was like, okay, he seems fine with the disc. Um, so like you look downfield for a second and then you turn and look at the reset. And I like how you're holding the disc, like you could pivot and, and throw a quick backhand. Um, but maybe if this player cleared, then you could throw an IO to your teammate if they made that cut. So like you have options when you hold the disc in the middle like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I honestly like this push pass that you threw. Like, it's probably your best option as a thrower. Um, or, like, you could throw a lefty backhand, too, which kind of does the same thing. You can't really throw a forehand here because the they're so tight to you. Uh, forehand is not going to be touchy enough. So I like the push pass option where you just kind of float it out and into the space that basically – your offense should be the only one who can touch this disc. And I think he gets fouled here, so it works out. Um, and one other clip, 
So here's another clip where you catch the disc on the sideline, I think. This is a really good cut, by the way. Just like it's a good deep cut, and I liked the timing where you pretty much cut under as soon as your defender turned his head, uh, which is a, a super effective strategy in getting open. So you look downfield for a couple seconds, and then, boom, you're looking at the reset. And this gets maxed, but it's still a completion. Um, so let's go over a few clips where I feel like you could be more dangerous with the disc. Because, like, I basically watching this film, I would say I feel confident in your ability to, like, not throw turnovers. Mm -hmm. um, even if, if the mark goes hard no around or something like that. But... Uh, I I don't see you being a threat with the disc yet. And so here are some options that I think you could have hit that would have put your team in a better spot on offense. So right here, you catch this reset. Great. If we freeze it, where do we see like a wide open player? Like all the way to the left there. Like on the break side right here, right? Like if you just step around and throw a backhand um it, it's technically breaking the mark but the mark doesn't look ready to take it away then we hit him here and then this other player probably scores a goal in this area uh your other teammate is kind of cutting him off a little bit but you could also throw a backhand to this guy and then he could throw a backhand here and then you can still hit the front of the stack for a goal um, but instead, you just you go back to the player who threw it to you. Um, and I feel like you do this. I think a lot of cutters who, like a lot of D-line cutters, kind of don't view themselves as, as throwers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of D-lines operate like their cutters just want to get the disc to their handlers as much as possible which seems like is what is happening here because you see like, okay, this handler is open. I'm going to throw it to him and then I'll just get out of the way. Um, and it's not, it doesn't put your team in a bad spot uh, because the other team is forced to roll. They don't do a great job of rolling. You still get the disc off the sideline, but now like the defense is set up, you lost some yards. Um, probably like 20, 25 yards outside the end zone now, and then your team ends up turning it over pretty soon. Yeah, right there. Okay, here. I think, like, do you see how number seven? Number seven is pretty open here. Um... And this is a this is not a super easy throw, but I wouldn't say it's a super difficult throw either. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not even to the break side really. It's like kind of behind the mark, but if you throw it early, it's not really a break throw because you're hitting your teammate in this this space uh, right here with with an IO or like flat forehand. Um, so like this is a throw that that I would expect you to uh, to be able to hit. And it looks like you just don't really look for it. Or you maybe look upfield for one or two seconds. And then the cutter senses that you're looking away. And then he just clears. And then you hit a reset. And like this is a fine reset. But you end up with a disc back here around half field or like past half field maybe. Instead of if you hit this, this IO then you're in end zone. Like the next throw could be a goal. Right. Um, so those are just a couple examples of uh, how you could be, how you could contribute to your team a little more with your throws. Um, although it doesn't look like you're a liability with the disc, like turning it over either. Exactly. Yeah. And I would say like the most important thing for a cutter as a thrower after throwing resets, throwing resets is really important. After that, you want to focus your attention on throwing continuations downfield. Mm -hmm. uh, because 
the most dangerous offenses um, have a, have cutters that are really good at throwing, like Pony or Ring. Like Ring is Ben Dameron and, and LSB, or like um, like Ryan Osgar. You know, the advantage to being a great thrower as a cutter is that when you catch the disc uh, as a cutter, there are fewer defenders downfield than if you're looking to throw as a handler, right? Because as soon as you get that initiation pass, um, the your your remaining cutters are going to have more space to work with. So it's really advantageous if you are good at throwing continuations as a cutter. Yeah. Um, okay. I, uh, another O theme is that you have, I would say you have great spatial awareness and good timing and you're never really getting in the way of your teammates. In fact, I see a lot of instances in which your teammates are getting in your way, but, um, on offense, it seems like you, you do do a really good job of maintaining vision of the fields. And like in this instance, you're starting in, in pretty bad spot like kind of right behind the disc and too close. So you just clear out of the way, right? Uh, I think that's a good clear. Um, next one, 1235. Uh, okay, right here. I think this is a, a great cut that you make. So you're you're seeing what's happening. You're like, okay, these resets are not getting open. My defender might be a little asleep right now. It's looking too much at the disc when you're right in front of the disc. <laughs> and then you just make a cut. You get wide open right here. And your thrower chooses to just suck it. Uh, I think this one works, actually. Yeah. But that's a lower percentage shot than if they just threw it to you right in front of them. Yeah. I think he. Uh, I think he's like stall nine there. So he just yeah. puts something up. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not super surprised that they threw a hawk at stall nine, but mm -hmm. like it was a good option that you gave to the thrower. Um, okay, next one, 24 minutes. Let's see what happens. Here, okay, I, I think I remember this clip. Yeah, so uh, your team gets a D, right? You're kind of clearing downfield. They throw this swing, or yeah, they throw this this slight swing, and you're like, they're probably going to throw a continuation this way. So you adjust the path of your clearing cut, and then you just get out of the way, which I think is good. Um you probably could have done something slightly better here. And that would be to just like run super wide of the disc kind of mm -hmm. down this sideline to the right. Um, but I also think what you did was, was pretty fine. 422, this might be a negative clip. Oh yeah, I remember this. So I, I think what happens here is you, I think you just threw a reset or something. And I am confused about this action where you kind of drift into the middle of the field. I'm not sure. I wasn't sure if there's a reason for it. Like maybe you're trying to get into end zone offense and set up a first stack. But if you're in Ho, you should be holding this rail because um, there are already three people here, or well, two people and, and this guy that are in front of the disc. And that's enough people. Like one of you needs to maintain space on the side. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was just getting too antsy and trying to pinch in. Um, yeah. Yeah, which is a super common thing that you will see at lower levels. Um, if we watched this clip again, uh, I bet we would see people holding space on the rails really well. Right. Um, 32 minutes. All 
All right, what's going on here? Oh yeah, I think this this cut is just really well timed. Um, like I like how you just it's always better to pretty much always better to cut too late than too early. And you just kind of wait for the thrower to be fully ready and to look at you. No one is in front of you. So that's a really good time to just blast under and you're wide open and the thrower just misses it. Um, so I would say that's an example of like, oops, I don't know. I just, okay, we're good. Uh, that's an example of like good awareness mm -hmm. because you recognize a space that is good for you to attack and you attack it and get open. So um, I, th I think you demonstrate good awareness in this game of knowing when to hold usually when you're off stage um, and like get out of people's ways too. Like I, I noticed you adjust a couple of your cuts in this game to avoid running into a teammate. Mm -hmm. um, but if you consistently do things like that too, like if you're assertive, uh, when you see an opportunity to, to catch an under, then that's really good too. Got it. So right about here, you're wide open. This thrower should absolutely hit you, I think, right, right here. Um, so uh, something you can do, I mean, two things you can do, which you just said, are be vocal and use your hands just to indicate that you're ready to catch it. So um, if that's a player who really wants the disc, maybe they're they're like, yeah, just like one one word like that, um, just to kind of get the throw's attention um, if you're in a good spot to catch it. Like you don't want to get the throw's attention if you're not in a good spot to catch it, but right here you, you, you should be catching this. Uh, or like you can put your hands up either like a pancake or like claw catch just to show where you want the disc. Um, so those are a couple of things that will probably help you get thrown to more, honestly. Uh, just like to indicate that you, you want the disc and they should throw it to you. Gotcha. So okay. I, I, would, I would say, yes, it's, it's a good thing to use your hands and your voice mm -hmm. when you are open. Don't do it when you're not open. 39, I think we already talked about this. Yeah, so a question I have written down right here, where is the play happening and what is the space you're aware of? Um, and those are just two questions which you should be constantly asking yourself as a defender anytime you're on the field. Um, and you don't wanna think super hard about it, right? You don't wanna be thinking a lot when you're on the field, because that's probably gonna make you overthink and reduce your on-field performance. You just want to internalize these, these things uh, so that your body is just doing them. And you'll do that just by playing more Frisbee. Uh, so where's the play on the fields? It's over here on the opposite side sideline in front of the disc. Uh, or maybe it's right here in the middle of the fields if they throw a reset. And where's the space that you're aware of? You're, you're aware of the opposite side of the field right now. Like your hips are facing this way. You're, all your body language is indicating that you're only aware of this small space um, on the opposite side of the field. Right. Um, okay, let's look at 5.30 here. This is another clip that we talked about already and okay what, what you do is not like strictly bad here like this is the, the dylan free child move right so this is a move that can work um i would recommend when you watch dylan do this he will like his catch and release back to the fourth side is so quick and that's part of what makes this effective another thing that would make this effective is like a big pump fake if you throw a big backhand pump fake here, then that mark is definitely going to shift over and give you more space to throw and go back to the open side. What you do is kind of in between those things, which is that like you catch the disc and get settled, and then you go back to the open side. And like I said earlier, like you force a roll, um, 
and and so it's like fine um you don't get trapped on the sideline or anything um but to make that move effective the give and go back to the open side you either need to go like really fast or throw this pump fake to get your receiver to bite on it really hard got it there were a couple clips i saw of you playing super good defense that we even talked about yeah oh yeah so this is this is a great clip right so i like that you're you first of all your your offender goes into the backfield here you don't have to chase him back there um so you just kind of hang out in front of the disc for a second seeing where the thrower looks like if the thrower were looking into this space then you could stand out here and deny that pass and then um around like stall four probably you're getting ready to play defense on the reset and then look like you're you're jogging back here to play d with your eye presumably on the disc here which is great like i think in in this frame you can see both the disc and your player which is awesome like you, if you watch elite level defense this is what handler defenders are doing all the time they're able to see both their the player they're guarding and a disc and then as your player starts moving that's when you lock in and start face guarding which is fine and then uh basically you make your offender dance and make a couple cuts i don't know if there's a miscommunication here or if it's just just a bad throw um and then your teammate gets a d or it's fouled but you force a bad throw because of your defense so that was great all right i think were you the one that told me about like handler defenders like find a spot and they like zone in on a spot and they can see both yeah. in the peripheral yeah yeah and if you watch games from club nationals you'll notice the handler defenders doing that all the time and it's not an easy thing to do but it's going to make your defense a lot better if you are able to see the disc go up and if you're able to see your player cut at the same time right uh but like in this in this situation like as your player starts cutting you transition into face guarding which is totally fine in this scenario because it's it's really hard to to constantly have vision of the disc it's like more important to lock in on your player here yeah and you do uh you can rely on up calls um which it looks like you do like there's an up call probably and then you turn and see the disc yeah my teammates were really good about like anytime i was guarding a, a handler or or the the reset i guess they were really good about up calls and telling yeah. me it was when, oh, and one, more, one more note here i have is when you're playing handler d you want to shuffle as much as possible mm -hmm. which it looks like you do a really good job of here like those that first cut that you defended shuffle 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 um and that's to your advantage because that if your feet are not crossing over like when you're running or bail running um then it's easier for you to change direction and go the other way and when you're playing handler d often you don't need to do more than shuffle because your offender is not getting up to 100 percent when they're cutting yeah so because you shuffled there then you're able to change direction easier and get back in and contest this pass although i mean it's your it's your other defender that actually gets the block but you're still close this is a clip of you uh, making an adjustment a defensive positioning adjustment based on something you see on the field so you're over here your guy just threw it he's now clearing up the fields and look at this that pass goes off and because you see that pass happen then you're ready for this upline cut if you didn't see that pass happen like there's another clip where you're just zoned in on your guy in a situation like this right <laughs> if you didn't see that pass happen your guy probably blasts up line and you're less ready for it you're more likely to just get, get beat up line for a goal but that's a situation where you see movement of the disc you see one pass happen and then you're able to take away the next pass because you saw that first pass right so that that was good d here is kind of an important like positional aspect of playing handler d when you're on the the flat side 
So there's the trap side and the flat side, or sometimes it's called the big side too. When you're on the flat side and you're in the forces forehand, this is a great time for you to just play super tight. And honestly, face guarding is not terrible here. Um, but you just let this reset off pretty easily. And again, like this is not a, a bad, like a terrible thing that you're doing. They're losing yards. It doesn't look like they have a, a great opportunity for a continue. But if you just lock down here, and maybe part of the reason is that I think you switch onto this guy. So you may be a little bit confused about who you're guarding. If you're able to just lock down here and play really tight, this could be a turnover. Um, and so I'd recommend playing on this hip and forcing, when the force is forehand, this works much better, forcing him into this space because this is a difficult forehand throw. Or if this is a really skilled thrower, maybe they have this lefty backhand, but it's not an easy throw. Um, if the force is backhand, then you might want to be a little bit more conservative, like probably play on this hip instead. Mm -hmm. But you still want to be very tight. You want to push this player to lose a lot more yards than this. Instead of them catching it here, you want them catching it like back here. Or if they catch it behind the thrower, that's awesome for you. That's great. But let's you want to avoid giving them a free reset to the middle of the field there. Okay, I think here here's a clip of this is like one of your best defensive clips in this game. So you're guarding this reset here. And I have like a slight critique of your positioning, but but you do a lot of really good things here. So I want to highlight those. Uh so this is really good how your guy cuts up line, you take it away, and you have a horizontal buffer here. So that's part of the reason that you're able to take this away, right? He realizes cutting up line is futile versus such a, a fast and agile defender who's already taking that away. So he cuts backwards, and then as he cuts backwards, you check in with the disc just for a split second to see if that throw goes up. And then this is important, you don't like completely rush into this space a lot of defenders will super over commit and end up on the wrong side and then they get toasted up line but you stay balanced here ready for a second up line cut if he goes and then you get a turnover because you took away that first option well you took away the first option this guy you also took away the second option and you took away that third option by being ready for another up line cut Nice. Um, so I would say the only thing that I would do differently here is like probably instead of just facing your guy here, I would I would start in a position that's more like this with your hips uh, again kind of open um, because I think that gives you a better view of the disc. And if they do happen to just like throw a floaty pass uh, to this guy's shoulder, then you will it, you'll be able to see the disc go up and get a D. Right. But overall, like this is this is a really good defensive clip. So in this clip, where are you? Right here. In this clip, I think your guy doesn't really do anything. He just kind of hangs out in end zone offense. Or I don't know if they're in end zone. He hangs out in the end zone. Not really doing a lot. He almost makes a cut there. But he doesn't. So I think your your defense on an individual basis is totally fine. This clip, like, seems like you do a decent job checking in with the disc every once in a while. Um, you're staying on the right side. I think the, the next level here for you as a defender um, would be to provide, like, constant talk to your teammates as the disc is swinging um like informing them of where the disc is kind of like the sideline is doing but like you're right next to them so they're probably going to hear you better <laughs> um and just like being super aware of where the disc is in end zone two there are a lot of opportunities for poaches and switches um so you could potentially be like an orchestrator of that like setting up a bracket back here 
if that's not part of your team strategy, then it's probably a bad idea to introduce that on your own as an individual. But mm -hmm. for teams that do things like that, they are able to do that because of defenders who can play heads up at the back of the stack and communicate where the threats are on the field. So in, in this case, would it be like a, what would have been like a good bracket there? I don't know if, if like, I don't know if in this particular, it like uh, maybe with this guy, with the, the other white hat guy, mm -hmm. you could put him on, on, on this side and you could take this side. Like that's an option. Um, but more so than, than just the, the bracketing, just kind of telling your teammates who is who is about to cut or like who is about to be on stage um because often like your teammates you know not everyone will be maintaining vision of the disc so if you're in a position where you're not, you don't have really have to play much defense here versus the guy who's just chilling in the back of the stack um you could help them be ready to play d by telling them who was about to cut like like this guy right here if he knows if you're telling him okay your guy is about to cut like you're up next then maybe he takes that throw away got it or like if you're telling the mark no inside or no around that's just kind of the the next level stuff that you will see more of on elite teams who are able to multitask and like play defense and talk at the same time, which yeah. is very difficult to do. But that would be a great thing to do. Like if you go to um, pick up, um, that could be a focus for you. Like, okay, I am going to provide as much talk as possible because a lot of the time at pick up, you're guarding someone and they won't be cutting. Mm -hmm. Or if you ever, I know you haven't played Golti, but Golti is a great time to work on your offensive and defensive communication skills. Because since picks are legal in Golti, you have to switch a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and communicating where the picks are being set is is really great. Um, as like it's very helpful for the defense. Got it um and and for anyone who's watching like playing other sports will help a lot with this too right like if you're playing defense in basketball people are always talking i don't know if you're playing if you're playing dodgeball like i do you have to talk to each other you have to figure out a game plan if you're playing pickleball you're constantly calling out who is going to take what ball like that's just a, an important skill for pretty much every team sport that you're going to play Let's go to your best clip. <laughs> My most proud moment from this game. Yeah, this was sick. All right, well, we'll watch it from here. So your team is just kind of swinging the disc around. That's a nice throw by that guy. And then let's rewind a sec. So I like how you're just chilling. You're, you're waiting for your time to strike, right? You got to wait for your teammate to clear first. And then when he clears and you see that defender is locked in on him, not looking to poach, then you look to attack this space. And then this look, looks exactly like the type of drill you would have me do for a field workout. Hmm. Like you, you take a few hard steps, and then you jump, and then, get, and then sprint after that. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, this is a sick move. And it's like, I think someone without the fitness background – that you have like would would not necessarily score this goal because the ability to decelerate and then accelerate again quickly is like the reason you score this along with your timing and that guy, that guy like that first move i make like i thought i was gonna beat him that when i first started accelerating and he is like like 75 percent of his body weight is just go like pushing into me at that point so that yeah. like that jump was like like it just happened so naturally where i was like i knew if i jump like it's like pulling the chair out from under him like i know he's gonna he's gonna keep going which yeah ended up happening which was kind of yeah. cool 
Um, you're, okay, I think we talked about this earlier. You're cutting deep here. And then you change direction and cut under when your player turns their head. Um, so this player is like trying to check in with a disc, right? If you're if you're guarding someone who's actively cutting like vertically up and down the field, that is most dangerous time to check in with the disc. Mm -hmm. That's when you would want to stay. The most important thing there is to stay locked in on your person. In those cases, then are you if you're locked in on your guy, you're really just relying on like up calls then at that point? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like you're probably playing on their front hip. Um, so if the disc does go up, like you're relying on an up call, trying to catch up, but you want to stay front hip so that you're not getting beat under. I see. Most likely. Um, but if he defends this undercut, then, then he's in a great position to just to like play heads up again as you clear across the field. Or sometimes, yeah. like you might have cut deep, and then like cleared under in this area, and that would have been a good time for him to to start playing heads up again. Here's a clip where I would say, so we watched this earlier. This is why I think a super useful throw is the half pivot backhand. Um, so in this clip, like this isn't, this doesn't look like a bad throw really. It just comes out a little bit slowly. And in that, in those moments, like if you release it here, this mm -hmm. is a, a, a completion for sure. Versus you take just a, I don't know, a 20th of a second or a fifth of a second, that's what I meant. Um, and then it gets macked. Like, that probably should have been a D. Uh, so, like, I, I definitely think a great skill to work on is a thrower, as a thrower is the ability to release the disc quickly, um, like, quicker than you're comfortable with. But you right. want to get comfortable with it so you can do that in a game. And... That's like, I don't know, it's a really common way to throw a reset from the sideline. Just to start with the disc in the middle, like you do in your body here, and then really quickly pivot around, throw like a really soft OI uh, before your defender can even react to it. Uh, we're going to come back to this clip in a second. I just want to point out, like, it would be, I think it would be good in this scenario to play on this side of your guy because you have two teammates and there are two offenders already in this space uh, over here. Um, and we're about to watch another clip that contrasts that. Let's go to 2837 here. Okay, so in this scenario, you are playing in front of your guy. And I think this is good. One, your guy is deeper, so it makes sense to play in front of him. Um, and two, look how there's no one in this space here. So if you were to play back hip instead, then I think your your offender could just slash really easily and catch it. So um, just like make, make a mental note of where the other players are in the field in this clip. And I, I really like how you're playing in this. And then let's compare that to 50 seconds ago when you're right here. When even though your guy is pretty deep, I think like he is probably not going to run past these people, these four people and catch the disc here. So personally, I would rather see you play like a little more hips open. Mm -hmm. But I don't think what you're doing is terrible as long as you're as long as your head is on a swivel and you're checking in with the disc every couple yeah. seconds. Do you, do you think the the previous one, uh, you, the one you said you liked, mm -hmm. um, I, should I be facing the other way too, or is me like I'm facing the end zone in that one? Yeah, I actually kind of like you facing the end zone here because, uh, in the case that like like if I'm guarding someone who's clearing down, 
this sideline mm-hmm. and it, specifically if it if i'm on the flat side so the disc is not on the trap side right the offense is trying to throw to a cutter in this space so if you are facing towards this end zone you can actually see those cutters coming in it's easy for you to flash and get a d or just stop that from being thrown i see uh whereas if you're facing the thrower i don't think it's bad to face a thrower because you can do a similar thing if you see the thrower like getting ready to throw to this space in front of him um but i think i would i would prefer to just see the cutters coming in in this scenario uh or i I guess something i do too is like i might play with my hips facing towards this sideline and like my my back actually facing to my receiver if i don't think they're a viable target and then that way i'm able to see both the thrower and the cutters coming in and then i can flash as I see appropriate and then get back to my guy. Got but it. that's kind of like, I mean, that's, that's a lot. Um, if you're just worried about taking away your person, then just think about buffer, see the disc. Gotcha. Okay. Those two will take you a long way. Yep. Uh, okay. Let's go back to this. Do you get here? So this is this is the reason that you want to see the disc. If uh, any type of hot goes up, like if you're just locked into your person, like in this particular scenario, you're close enough. You're already pretty close to where the disc lands. Uh, so it doesn't matter that much. But if you're farther away, um, then the difference between you getting this D and not getting this D could be are are you able to see the disc leave the thrower's hand um right. that was good d through completion there yeah that's a completion yeah <laughs> <laughs> beautiful throw <laughs> Um, but no, so I think like, like you're saying, so if I, if I set up hips open to the thrower and then with proper D gap, like I'm essentially already standing where this, where this throw lines up or ends up, right? Yeah, probably pretty yeah. much. I mean, it looks like you're, I can't really tell what your positioning is in this moment as you're off screen. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, and we're gonna look at your mark here. So after this player catches the disc, I don't think this is like a, a bad, um, a terrible position to set up as a mark, right? Your, your player is kind of close to the sideline here. So you wanna be fairly flat. Um, I think you just need to have more anticipation that they could throw this around. Um, but what ends up happening is your your teammate gets an nice D. Because I don't think this cutter took a very good angle, right? They're just cutting like flat or away from the disc. Um, but marking is like it's a lot about anticipation, right? Uh I was kind of curious to see what other people did in this scenario. So um as I was watching that Bravo machine game, I was paying a lot of attention to the marks, mm-hmm. and they typically we're in a position that was very similar to this and honestly not moving that much, but they were very anticipatory. And whenever a thrower would start to make a move, uh, they would look to just jump on that really quickly. I see. And the thrower is, is holding it in a backhand grip the whole time, uh, which could clue you in on something yeah. too. They, they might be looking to throw a backhand. So yeah, I think that is those are like a lot of things I want to talk about. Um, big recaps for you. Buffer slash D gap. Uh, reading about pull reading pull plays or just like thinking about them. Maintaining a view of the disc when your cutter is off stage, then locking in when your cutter is on stage. 
you're already good at locking in. Um, and then on offense, you're doing well. Could just be more of a weapon with a disc. Look to break the mark and continue resetting the disc off the sideline quickly. Andy, where can, where can people find you? Outro, yeah. Uh, my Instagram is, is Manny Eckert. Um, you can hit me up there, I guess. If you want to do your own film review, just send me a DM or an email, mannyeckert at gmail.com. If anyone is, is interested in any sort of analysis or like wants to talk about Frisbee at all, I'm always open to talking about Frisbee.